Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. And today, on popular demand, I'm going to talk to you about my homemade CNC. So, let's throw the intro and we can begin. Okay guys, as I said, this is a home build machine which I designed and constructed on my own. I did get some help from a friend because at that time I didn't know nothing about CNC routers and CNC machining basically. So there was a guy who gently helped me with certain choices and material, motors, kits and I'm really grateful for that person. This is made out of aluminium and I want it that way because for the strength of it, it might be a little overkill for wood, but that's the way multis are, basically. As you might have seen throughout my CNC series, this is a fixed gantry with a movable <laughs> bed rather than the whole gantry moves forwards and backwards. The advantage of this system is of this configuration basically it's a much more sturdier machine than having the gantry moving back and forth. On the other hand the big problem of this design is um, basically space-wise, because having the table moving forwards and backwards, you're a bit limited on the space where you're going to put the machine on. Because basically you have half of the table protruding at the back and even half of the table protruding at the front. Not just the length of the machine itself, but in this case I have to con take in consideration the the table protruding at the back and the table protruding at the forward but the problem in a way i got around it and i found a suitable place for this machine i'm using lee screws 16 millimeter diameter nema 23 stepper motors i found a good deal if I'm not mistaken on eBay on these steppers motors. If I'm not mistaken, these are the 400 ounces torque ones, which are quite strong for the NEMA 23s. They're good, they're reliable. On the other hand, the only drawback about stepper motors is they are limited regarding speed. They have good torque, but speed-wise, they're not the ideal. If you want speed, you can go with DC motors, but that's another whole story. Even you need special boards and drivers for, for DC motors. These are simpler. Now regarding the spindle motor, let me remove this. I have the crest. 1050 this is the 1000 uh, the 1000 watt model is it's good reliable powerful it can go from 5000 to 25000 rpm so it's good for wood and for um, aluminium but what i found is just it's a bit noisy and for aluminium it's not the ideal in my opinion but i worked with aluminium as well light cuts but still it's not the great for aluminium but for wood it's perfect i would like to upgrade it to a chinese spindle the one with the vfd with the frequency drive because those the advantage of those on this is that basically they are much more silent in which for me would be ideal since i have like a home um 
a home workshop. But for now, this will do just fine. So basically, this is my setup. I have the machine in front of me, mouse, keyboard, and this is the screen, which I have Mac 3. I'm controlling this machine using Mac 3. I have a dedicated computer for this machine, which is inside that room. And I have all the electronics and control boxes, drivers, as well in that room regarding all the stepper motors and the limit, limit switches and stuff. Okay, guys, uh, let me show you on the other side, in the, in the other room, the PC and the control box of the CNC machine. Let me turn the camera. Okay, so this is the P this is the PC which is controlling, which I have Mac 3 on. This is just for the CNC, there's nothing more into it. This is running a Windows 7, which was quite of a hassle to run Windows 7 on a modern PC, but my guy managed to do it, I don't know how. And this PC case underneath it is the actual Sorry for the dust. It's the actual control box for the CNC machine, which is outside here. Let me take off the cover. So better, there is a lot of stuff in here. So little basic description power supply for the one two and three uh, stepper motor drivers this power this is a pc power supply which i converted to have multiple 12 volts and 5 volts outputs which i have outputs for the fans cooling fans have one two and one, two, and three cooling fans blowing air out. Uh, five volts for the DB25 ward, which is controlling the stepper motor drivers. Uh, five volts for LEDs, basically. And what else? And that's it. And these are the outputs from the drivers to the stepper motors, which goes outside. So yeah, this is the control box for the CNC. This is all done by me, and it was a very frustrating week trying to wear this thing up. But at the end, I managed. How long have I been doing this? Too much. I think I took almost three years to finish it up. But started it, I stopped, and then I started again. I ruined two boards while building yeah the electronics were, were a nightmare to do and you now for the rest it wasn't a smooth journey that's all i want to say but at the end the result is is it's good although in the beginning it was a bit of a headache trying to um, calibrate the machine properly, making everything run properly. But at the end, with some help again, I managed to finish it up. Now, somebody of you sent me an email regarding how I zero my tools, for example. And 
was quite easy. So what I do, let me set up the camera for a better angle. Okay, so regarding zeroing the tool, what I do is, for example, here I have a 3 millimeter cutter. And for example, this is something I want to work on. So what I do, I have this plate. Basically, it's just a piece of aluminum, which I me measured correctly. And I know how much is the thickness of this plate. This is very important for what I'll explain next. And I have another wire here. Together, they just close the circuit. So what I do is I connect this part of the connection to the gantry. They just have a hole in the plate. And this other part, I will rest it on the work. Now what I do, I put down the whole spindle until one centimeter above this plate. And on Mach 3, I just press, there is an auto tool zero button. I just press it, wait a couple of seconds, and then the whole gantry start to moving down until the bit touches the piece of aluminum. And since everything is, in this case, everything is made out of aluminum, it just close the circuit between these two wires. And that is like a trigger a switch. Now, how does Matri know that the tool, the zero person, is just above the work? Basically, on Matri, I programmed the auto tool zero button so that it goes down until it touches the, the plate. And when it does, it goes up a certain amount and it knows that the, that the plate, in this case, is a 10 millimeter plate. It knows that when it touches that point, the, the bit is exactly 10 millimeters above the work that we're going to the piece of wood. And that's how I zero the tools on this machine. Something I like to do every time I switch on the machine, right after I start putting work on the table, I like to reference all the axes. It just, just one click of a button, there is a reference all, and when, it, when I click the button, the machine will go um, on to find the zero position of the machine, basically. The Z-axis will go up, the gantry will go up until it hit the limit to switch. The, the table will go at the zero position until it touches the limit switch. And then the axe on the X-axis will go until it touches, basically it goes at the zero, zero, zero. And that's it. And the machine is ready to cut. Well, I need to put the dust, dust extraction pipes back again. But anyway. Now, something regarding cost of building one at home versus buying a kit. Well, this machine, I built it for a specific reason, to build guitars guitar necks, bodies, and it's built to last. I did spend a lot of money on it, buying parts individually, but I think it's still cheaper than buying an actual kit of this size of this material. I think it still will be still cheap rather than buying a kit. But then again, buying a kit, you have a kit already, which is already designed and tested and 
available and you just need to put everything together. In this case, I did spend a lot of time even to, to design and project this kind of build and testing out certain stuff. I did change a lot of stuff during the, the beginning. But at the end, yeah, it's a bit cheaper. Okay, guys, so that's it for today's episode. I hope I answered most of your questions regarding my CNC. And I trust you liked today's episode and enjoyed it and learned something from it. And until the next time, take care and goodbye.